Okay, in this problem, we're uh, asked to determine the following if we're given the function f of x, y equals 5x squared, y squared plus x cubed y, and the point p is equal to negative 1, 1. And we're asked to determine the direction in which f increases most rapidly at p, the maximum value of the rate of change of f at p, and the direction in which f decreases most rapidly at p, the minimum of the value of the rate of change of f at p, and finally a description of the directions in which f remains constant. Okay, so we can recall from a previous problem that the gradient vector of f at negative 1, 1 is the vector 8, negative 11. And we want to find, first, the direction in which f increases most rapidly at p. Well, we know that the gradient vector tells us the direction in which f increases most rapidly. And we want it as a unit vector. So we'll just take the gradient vector and normalize it. And we see that we get 1 over the square root of 64 plus 121, which is 1 over the square root of 185 times the vector 8, negative 11. So that's our answer for part A. Now we want to determine the maximum value of the rate of change of f at p. Well, we know that the rate of change of f at p in the direction u is equivalent to the magnitude of the gradient vector of f at p times the cosine of the angle between the gradient vector of f at p and u. So we know that this normalized value is always going to be positive, so we want to maximize the cosine of theta, which we know to be positive 1. So the maximum value of the directional derivative of f at p in the direction of u is just the magnitude of the gradient vector of f at p. And we know that to be 8, negative 11. So And we already calculated that. That's the square root of 185. So that's our result for part B. For part C, we want to find the direction in which f decreases most rapidly at p. Well, we know that the direction in which f increases most rapidly is given by this vector. And we know that the direction in which it decreases most rapidly is the opposite of the gradient vector. So we'll just tack a negative sign in front of that. And we get negative 1 over the square root of 185 times the vector 8, negative 11. For part D, similarly as easy, we look at our answer for part B. We want to find the minimum value of the rate of change. Again, it's going to be equal to the magnitude of the gradient vector of f of p times the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta minimizes at negative 1, so it'll just be the negation of part b. And we get negative square root of 185. Now for part e, we want to find the direction in which f remains constant. So we know that that's going to happen when the directional derivative is equal to 0. So we can go ahead we know that this is equivalent to the directional derivative of f at p in the direction of u. 
And we know that the gradient vector of f at p is 8, negative 11. And we want to find some vector x, y where that is equal to 0. So we can calculate this. We get And we get that x is equal to 11 eighths times y. So now we can plug in this value for x into our vector. We get we get the following equality for values of y, um, 11 eighths y comma y times the vector, dotted with the vector 8, negative 11, equals 0. And we want this to be a unit vector, so we can go ahead and normalize this vector. And that will be our vector, or our directions in which uh, f does not change. f remains constant. So we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. We get So I went ahead and pulled a y out of our top vector, and we see that the bottom, or the denominator, is the square root of y squared times the quantity 121 over 64 plus 1. We can factor out this y squared, but we have to keep in mind that it could be, it's going to be the absolute value of y. So this is equivalent to, and then we'll cancel out that absolute value of y with the y and insert a plus or minus to keep the absolute value. And we get plus or minus the vector 11 eighths comma 1 over the square root of 121 plus 64 over 64. And we can simplify that even a little bit further. And we get plus or minus 1 over the square root of 185 times the vector 11 eighths. So that is going to be the, the two vectors in which f remains constant.